Hey guys, thanks for joining me for someone to play games. My name is Lance, and today I'm going to teach you how to play Woolly Wammoths. This is a brand new game from Smirk and Dagger Games. It is a two to four player game that takes roughly 30 to 60 minutes to play, and is a competitive game, so each of the players is going to be working against the other players to either be the last person standing or the first to get six meat tokens. So in the game itself, each player is going to be playing a clan in prehistoric times that is controlling their cave people, and they're hunting mammoths. And the way prehistoric people do that, apparently, is to push them off of cliffs. I'm not sure how they get the meat after that, but somehow it works. So the players are going to be playing movement cards simultaneously and then totaling up all of the movement points on all of those cards and then moving their cave people that number of spaces. It hopes that they will reach the edge of the cliff without going over so that they push their mammoth over and collect those meat tokens. Now, of course, the players are, ha are going to have a hand of different cards that they're going to have options to play. So throughout the game, the players are going to be trying to get another player's heads and figure out what they're going to potentially be doing or based on where they're at versus where they're at, what kind of cards they're going to be playing and whatnot so that they can potentially get the mammoth to, to charge and trample their, their opponents while keeping their cave people alive so that they can either be the last person standing or the first one to be able to collect six meat tokens. So my opinion is on this one. I had a really good time with this one and really enjoy a lot of Smirk and Dagger games. They do a really good job of balancing that Smirk with the Dagger, of course. And with this one, it is just crazy weird. I mean, trying to chase mammoths off of cliffs is, is just hilarious and can really lead to a lot of, of deep strategy as well as you're, like I said, you're really trying to get into your opponent's head and figure out what kind of cards they potentially can play. And each player is going to have the same set of, or same set of cards. So everybody knows what everybody else has. And based on your memory, you'll be able to remember what cards the other players have played, which will be able to tell you what cards they have left in their hand or potential to be played. So some really interesting combinations with this one and some really interesting strategies with this as well. So I would definitely recommend this if you're a fan of Smirk and Dagger games, if you're looking for some good just all out fun backstabbing and and uh, com competition games as well. This one definitely meets that need and does a really good job with it without complicating the rules. The rule book to this one is very simple as you guys are going to see. This is going to be a nice quick teaching video to outline this game. And like I said, just have a lot of fun with it. The components of this one are really cool as well, and they have a little sliding board as the players continue to progress as they push those mammoths off the cliff. Those boards are going to extend out so and add new tar pits and things, challenges for the players to work through. Some, so some interesting components that really bring the game up, and I love the artwork with this one. It's just a lot of fun with some of the cave people just doing all kinds of crazy stuff. So... As always, if you enjoy these videos, if you like what I do, please consider that like button, subscribing to my channel, as it really does help me to continue to grow and be able to bring these games to you guys to teach you how to play them. If you want to stay up to date on all my videos, also consider ringing that bell so you get notifications anytime I release new content. Let's go ahead and head to the table, and I'll teach you guys how to play. The first set of cards we have here are the player cards, and each player is going to receive the same deck of eight cards, numbered four down to negative three, based on the color of the they've chosen to play. Each of these cards is going to have a large number, which is the number of movement points that is going to be added to all players, cave people. And there's some of the cards are going to have a little number next to it, which means that the player that ha played the card can choose to add or subtract that number from their overall total. And they do not have to choose, they do not have to use that ability if they don't want to. At the bottom of the card is an explanation of the card's effects or an ability based on that card. So over here we have Take Break. With this one, your cave person does not move this turn, but you're still going to add two to everybody else's movement. Then we have the Charge card. With this one, after all cave people have moved, you're going to draw a Charge card for each charge that was played, and then you're going to move everybody's mammoth that number of spaces. If the mammoth comes in contact with any cave people, they are going to be trampled and removed from their boards. Finally, we have the Runaway. This is a duck and ambush, a charging mammoth this turn. So if this is played and somebody else plays it a charge card, if the mammoth reaches a player that played Runaway, then they will instead kill the mammoth and not be eliminated, and then they will receive a meat token. And I'll explain more of this later. The second set of cards we have are the charge cards. So at the end of players' turns, if they've played a charge card, then they will draw and resolve one of these, moving the mammoth the number of spaces based on the charge card that was drawn. Some of these smaller numbered cards are also going to have an additional effect that is resolved as well. So for example, with this one, surviving cave people move back two spaces. 
Then we have the times two charge. So with this one, you're going to replace this with two new charge cards. So you would discard this one and draw two cards, add them together, and that's the number of spaces a mammoth can move. The final set of cards are optional set of cards that players can choose to use. Your first couple games, I would recommend not using these. But each one of these cards is going to give that player a special ability and is also going to tell them which tribe they're going to use for their game. Once a player uses one of the two abilities that is on the card, then they will flip the card over, and then when they lose a cave person, they'll be able to flip it back over to its active side and use it again. And the last thing I want to go over before setup is the player boards. And each player is going to receive their own player board that is going to have a number of features on it. There will be a starting space where you'll place your cave person to start the, the, the game, and then you'll also place a mammoth at the end of the track on that very last space. Now throughout the game, the players are going to be playing movement cards to move, their characters along this path and there's going to be a number of features on it so first off there are going to be tar pits so if a player ever ends in a tar pit they will lose their cave person also if a cave person ever ends their movement in one of these two tusk spaces they're successfully push the mammoth off of the cliff and will receive a meat token anytime a player receives a meat token they're also going to move their board one space back to signify that they've found the mammoth and need to travel further and further to find more mammoths as the game goes on, this is going to lengthen, adding more tar spaces to the board. For setup, each player is going to receive their own player board, which you may have to adjust. You want to make sure that the start space is the only one revealed at the bottom of the card, and at the top is going to be the tusk at the end of the card. From there, then we can place out all the meat tokens so that all players can reach them. You'll also want to shuffle up and place out the charge deck, and then each player is also going to receive a mammoth token that you're going to place on the very last space on the track. Then each player is going to choose, or if you're playing with the advanced game, go ahead and shuffle up the advanced uh, ability cards and deal out one to each player, and that will be the, the tribe that each player is using. For my game, I'm only setting up for two players, and each player is going to receive their deck of cards as well. You do not need to shuffle this up, as each player will choose the card that they want to play. From here, we're ready to begin the game. Wooly Whammoths is played over an undefined number of rounds. During each round, each player is going to choose a card that they're going to play face down, and then all players are going to reveal those cards. Once the cards are revealed, the players will total up the amount of movement on those cards, and each player will move their cave person that number of spaces. If they're able to reach one of the last two spaces, they'll push the mammoth off the cliff and gain a meat token. Or if they've gone too far, they will jump off the cliff with mammoth and also gain a meat token. Otherwise, if they fall into a tar pit, then they will lose their cave person. This is going to continue going turn after turn until one player has, able, has been able to get six meat tokens or they are the last tribe standing. So moving into the game, each player is going to choose a member of their tribe that they're going to place on the starting track. And then from there, we're ready to move into the turn. So each player is going to look at their cards that they have in their deck and choose one of those cards that they want to play. So let's say that, for example, our blue player plays this one. So he'll place that card face down and the purple player will choose a card as well wanting to move pretty far he's going to play that one once all players have had their card in front of them ready to go then all players will simultaneously reveal their cards and count up the number of movement points on them so only count up the large numbers for all the players so our player here played a four and our player here played a three for a total of seven movements from there then each player is going to move that number of spaces along their track Players that have the little numbers can choose to add those or subtract those if they want to. So for example, this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this player can move one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He could choose to move an additional space if he wanted to, which would put him up to eight. But that's a little far for him, so he's going to hold off there. Once the players have resolved their movement, these cards will be added to the player's discard piles and will not be gained again until they spend a meat token to gain up all of their discarded cards. From there, then it'll move back to the players choosing another card again. So let's look at another example of this. Our blue player will play this card, and our purple player will play this card. So then we'll reveal. So blue has played take a break, so he is not gonna move this turn, and purple, has played a charge card so first off we're going to add up all the movement so three points of movement so blue will not move because he played the take a break but purple will move so one two three and just stayed on the cliff or on the on his path so he will gain a meat token and his person will move back to the starting space and again we'll move this 
board one space back, adding further distance, and then we'll add the mammoth back. Now, since the player has played a charge card, we'll reveal the top charge card of the deck. And so this one is going to move the mammoth two spaces forward. He did not catch the cave person, so we did not lose him. But then it says the surviving cave person is going to have to discard a card at random from their deck. So let's go ahead and discard this one here. So again, then the once the card has, the charge card has been resolved, then the mammoths are going to be reset back to the end space. And then this will be discarded as well. From there, then our players will continue. We'll discard our cards. And the players will choose another card. Now a player at any time during their turn or in during a turn can choose to spend a meat token to gain back all of the cards that they have in their discard pile. And if a player is out of cards in their deck, then they have to spend a meat token in order to regain their cards. And if they do not have any meat tokens, then their tribe has starved and they are out of the game. So let me set up one more example for this. For this example, I'm gonna go ahead and say that our purple player is all the way up here. And our, our blue player is a little bit back here. So then each player again is going to choose their cards that they want to play. So let's do this one here. And our purple player will play this one here. All right, so then we'll reveal the cards again. And so our blue player has played a charge card as our purple player is really close to the edge. He, he's hoping to catch him with the mammoth charge. And our player anticipated this and played the runaway card. So first off, we're going to total up the movement. So we'll move back two spaces with each of our people. And then we will resolve the charge as usual. So we have a charge of five. So our mammoths are moving pretty fast here. One, two, three, four, five. So he didn't catch the blue player. But purple is definitely going to be caught. But because he played the duck and ambush card, he will instead defeat the mammoth, move his player back, again extending this track out, and will receive a meat token. And then we would discard the cards as usual. And like I said, this is going to continue going turn after turn with the players until one player has collected six meat tokens, or they're the last tribe standing. So let's go ahead and say, for example, that uh, our purple player was down to one, and our blue player ended up running off the cliff with the to get the last meat. And so the tr blue tribe is out as they have no other players. So purple has won even though they haven't they don't have enough meat. Now, if all the players are eliminated or some of the players are eliminated at the end of the game and there's a tie, then it'll be based on the player that has the most meat. And if they're still tied, then it's going to be placed based on the player that is furthest along on the track. And if the players are still tied after that, they have shared their victory in hunting the mammoths. Well, I hope you guys found that video helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my videos and leave me feedback on them. I do really appreciate it, and I try to take into account everything you guys say to make the best possible videos. Also, drop in the comments below if you have any requests or if there's any games you would like to see me covering. I'm always up to hearing what you guys are interested in me covering or playing. Let me know in those comments below. Also, soon by my Facebook and Twitter account, let me know what you guys are doing over there. Also, if you're interested, I just started up a Twitch account with my friends where we're going to be doing live plays every now and then. So stay tuned for that as well if that's something you guys are interested in. And if you like this video, if you like what I do, please consider that like button, subscribing to my channel as it really makes a big difference, helps me continue to grow and be able to bring these games to you guys to teach you how to play them. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.